trying to give it all a little bit of fresh air, a little bit of light, including the lime tree. But we're back. We've got a bit of free time for about an hour. So, I'm going in. Last thing I got to in my super light, amazing garage is I got all the plastics off of this side, and that's what I want to do on this side and sort of show you guys how to do it if you ever wanted to. Just to sort of make a video in a way. Um, obviously, we're changing the silver seat belts to the black ones, as I've done at the front. It is now black, not silver. The only reason why I did that is because I have to keep cleaning them because they get pretty minging. I don't really know if it's going to show too much on this one, but they get like that and they're really annoying to clean every so often. Maybe I'm not cleaning them very good, maybe I'm not using the right product, but they always shine up nice and then about after two months of use they're just a bit yucky. So We are going for black. They're nice and clean. And hopefully I'll never have to worry about them again. And the fact that I'm going for everything black in my car, taking all the silver bits off and all the chrome looking bits away. Um, yes, we need to get rid of the silver seat belts. So today's video is just going to be how to get all the plastics off correctly. You need to remove the back bench. That's point number one. So if you haven't done that, you're not going to get anywhere, unfortunately. And that's not a fun job. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to be getting the plastics off today and accessing the seat belts. And then in the next video, I'm hopefully going to start swapping the seat belts around as I've done uh, with the passenger side. Um, the whole reason why I did that side first is just to give myself a little bit of knowledge because I was sort of pulling here, breaking a few things and stuff like that. But hopefully it all goes back together fine. Um, but now, hopefully I know the order correctly to take them off in, ish, and the right places to pull. So to take all the plastics off, this is sort of the general kit that I use. I just use a T40 or a T15 for all these little screws, and the bigger ones are obviously for the front seat belts. Um, oh, that's actually a socket for this one down here as well. I'm pretty sure it is a 17, yep, yeah, a 17 socket, um, just to take that one off for the back passenger. And the front driver's seat belt, that's when you need the T40. Ideally with some form of socket and etc to help you out. Flathead, and this is always quite good just for pulling off the, like, the, the plugs that cover them and stuff like that. Flathead helps or maybe just to lift the plastic first of all before you get your fingers behind it. But this is all I use. So T40, T15, 17mm socket and a few other bits um, is mainly what you're going to need um, for this job. This is all the plastics in currently. I always start up here by just pulling this one off just to feel like I've got somewhere straight away. Uh, and then I'm gonna start undoing all the little Torx bits that I can see. So there's one there, one just in here. Uh, I'm gonna get this nut off down there. That's the 17 mil. I'm gonna go to the front and get the 40 mil off at the bottom of the driver's side seat belt. Um, and yeah, just start attacking all the nuts you can see. Any more on the inside? I can't remember what under the off in all honesty, but I'm gonna take them off for first of all. And this top panel here, which you should just be able to put your fingers behind and pull down wherever it feels quite tough. Then it should start popping, hopefully. Ah, like that. It all just pops away from up there. But yeah, we're turning this side with the plastics on to this side where there's nothing. It's ever a black, lovely black seat belt. Which I'm quite excited to get on this side, so yeah, I'm gonna put on like a little bit of time lapse. I don't really have anywhere to put my camera anymore because I've taken the other side away, but yeah, just getting all the little bits off I can first of all. Okay, so I've taken out two 15s, pulled this panel off just to quickly talk about this. Uh, that's obviously to cover the speaker. Um, I've taken the bolt out that was there with the socket. So the 70mm socket to take that off. But this one, you obviously got to pull this off first because the speaker's attached and all wired up behind. So um, pull this side, these pop out, and then this side should lift through. Just because on the back, you have like the catchers that hook round. So obviously try not to pull that side out because that will snap them. But the rest of these ones pop out. So pull from the right to the left. And then when we come down, hopefully I can get the light there. I've undone with the 40, well the T40 bit, and then you just lift up, because there's like a hook that goes in, and you should be able to pull, and it'll pop out. And then obviously to put it back in, push it back through, it's kind of like a squidgy thing the other side, and it goes back through, and then you lift it back down 
to reinsert the beauty. And then that's that one loose. And well, I'll keep it together for now. Just leave him hung around. Out the way. So yeah, obviously you need to attack the speaker. I'm pretty sure it's the same Torx bits, which it is. Thank you, Renault. Get four of those off. And then yeah, we'll uh, disconnect the speaker, but I'll come back to you once I've taken these four out. Loads of little things. I always find it easy just to chuck them in a, in a box and then you'll always know where they're gonna be. On the back of the speaker. White, remember how you get it off. Just squeeze that little white bit there, and it should pop out. And uh, keep the speaker safe as well. Pretty sure this works the same. You pull from the back, and then this side obviously de-hooks itself, and then you get full access to the front seat belt then, but just by taking that one big bit off. And then lastly, you can take this off. You can't take that off first because they're sort of uh, like joined in a way. This one go behind, goes behind that one, so you can take this one off first. So yeah, just pull it from this side and you go along all these sort of pop sockets to this side. I, every single time, the, the other side and this side, um, I broke just this top clip that hooks around here. Um, I always find it quite difficult because as this side comes out, this gets in the way. And I don't know whether you're supposed to lift it over or, or maybe knock the whole panel to the side. Maybe I could do next time, but both times I broke this little clip that hooks around here. Um, but when I put it back in, it didn't seem to move too much. But just be careful, there's a little hook that sort of hooks around the back of that. And God knows how you're supposed to get that out properly. But someone in the comments may know. Um, and the same with the bottom, the bottom just pulls out as well. When you're done with that, obviously we need to get access down to the bottom now. So you just need to push this one down and out of that. It sort of hooks around. I don't know if you can see, it's quite dark. And then that sort of gives that all a little bit of freedom. Just take that out. Move the carpet away. And then it should pop out as it goes along. Obviously I've still got my rails in, which is a bit of a pain in the bum, but I can't get the car back out just yet to get them off. But there is a, just enough room to get down to that little bolt down there. Not the top one, that one. That again is a T40. I always put it on my little, tiny weeny little um, uh, ratchet spanner and get it down and into there and get that one off. It's not too tough, well it wasn't on the other side anyway, but just be careful when you pull it off because there's that little line that runs through it. Um, a wire of some sort. So yeah, be careful, but just a little T40 on the bottom one and the whole system will come out. On the top here, you need to pop this little cover cap off with like a flat head. And what that will do is reveal the other, I think it's another T40 underneath there. So just get a flat head behind him. And he should pop off. Oh, that's a T40 on a nat, so take your pick. Okay, so a little point to be made. Um, obviously, one, that bolt just sort of stays with it. You can't really get it out, I don't think. But obviously, luckily, it comes with the black ones as well. As soon as you take this off, this sort of bottom section, I don't know what happens, but as soon as you take the nut out of the bottom one there, it won't let the seat belt come back out again. So you feel like you've locked it or jammed it, whatever. So when I first did mine, I was a little bit concerned. I thought, oh God, now I've broken it straight away. But um, as soon as you obviously do that, put all these bits back in, that goes sort of into the car, into the side. Uh, and then as soon as you bolt it in and tighten it all up, um, it sort of releases itself and it works again so don't be too concerned by it locking itself pretty much um, it's just yeah, it's just what goes down but that is the grubby silver seat belt out and i don't know whether i just try and sell it because some people like the, the silver seat belts and they're like 172s and that but i am putting a 172 black seat belt in my 182 <laughs> Then you grab your new seat belt and obviously it's pretty much doing exactly the same. You need to put the, uh, the LEDs down. You need to put the bottom one in first because obviously that releases the seat belt and then you can find wherever the hole is at the top and put that in. But the bottom one needs to go in first. No. So you pretty much just hand tie all the way in until the very end, we just got to give it like a little conk with your, uh, with your torx bit. So, 
It's one of those lovely round nuts. When you get it off, it's just one crack and then you should be able to undo it with your hands. So that's quite nice. And now, obviously, as soon as it's plugged in, it allows me to play with it, which is ideal. Because then you bring it up, find your hole at the top, stop screwing this beauty in. And like I said, this whole part of getting all the plastics off and everything is reasonably easy and quite straightforward. You're just obviously taking out and putting back in and it's sort of as easy as that. But the hardest bit is the back bench. Getting that right. Well, I say the hardest bit, if you know what you're doing, it's easy enough. But um, yeah, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, you, you were like me and you start thinking about just grinding it out and stuff like that. So. But that's pretty much it. Obviously hook it back on, attach the hook back to the loop end and then you're just going to be placing it all back in down the bottom end. Once again, as soon as we're done with all that, you want to be running your fingers along here, make sure this is all pushed back in, wherever the puffers are. Uh, hooking that one back round. <clears throat> and then we're back. Make sure the seatbelt's on the hook, push it in. Right through that sort of squidgy section at the back, so find your way back through. So there we go. Pulling it round and down, and back to where it's supposed to be. Now you've got a black seatbelt. Perfect. Just need to put that ball back in with the T40. So I'm actually going to Bath Christmas Market at 12, so the video is going to have to end here. So this is going to be like a part one of two. Um, I've just finished, obviously, the front seat belt, so now we've got the black one in, and the silver ones are gone. Both the front seat belts are done, and that's all sort of back together. The front of my car is looking like an absolute joke with all the plastics in because I'm lacking in room um, and obviously next time uh, as soon as I get back hopefully tonight or maybe tomorrow night I'm going to be um, attacking the back obviously I've got this far on this side um, but I don't quite know the whole process for this side. I think it might be similar just to undo that one stick them back in and then they'll run fine again maybe get in somewhere underneath here to access the back end of that hook not quite sure obviously you can get that one and then maybe it becomes loose after that i'm not i don't know but i'm gonna have a look at that first of all and i'm gonna film this side for you guys obviously once you've taken this one off and done whatever you needed to do at the front there is one more to do so don't just do those two and then try and rip it out make sure you get that other little one as well but we're going to access the back of this um, and swap those two back seat belts these ones are a little bit better because obviously they don't get used as much oh, i say that this one's an absolute joke um but yeah i definitely want to change them all make sure they're all black and all looking pretty so yeah that's part one hopefully you guys yeah it's helping you guys if you wanted to get the plastics out and change the seat belts whether you wanted to access the back speakers or rewire or anything like that this is what you've got to do if you want to make it look all neat and tidy so yes removing plastics in the clear is uh easy enough let's say it just takes a little bit of time um and maybe break a few things but yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, part two will be out as soon as I possibly can. Um, remember, we've got merch for sale. Do let me know if you would like a jumper or a t-shirt or wherever you want to be looking at a different design. The design on the back doesn't have to be half and half because obviously the other half is a 182. I know a lot of people, well, I'll say some people that watch my channel are 172 owners, so you can always just have the front end um, on the back if you want to because obviously you only have the single exit. But thank you very much for tuning in again um, and I'll see you for part two very shortly. Uh, cheers guys.